Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be giving tips on how to make a better demo video for your software application. Okay, a couple disclaimers before we get started here. Basically, this is for more demo videos, so more screencast type videos where you're literally demoing what your software actually is. It can kind of be seen as like a replacement for perhaps a webinar, like a live webinar. And it's definitely not about like a motion graphic explainer video or something like that. So this is pure demo videos for software applications. These are also just tips, so it's not a literal how-to on everything you need to know. Um, we're not gonna be talking about how to record audio and the equipment you'll need or how to you know edit in a software editing app these are just quick tips on some things to pay attention to if you're going to create your own uh, demo video um, so without further ado let's get started okay so the first tip is write your script first um, basically there can be a lot of things to think about really in any video production but um, if you focus on writing the script first that should really be the the backbone and the base of your video so write the script first and then you'll determine you know, what you wanna show in the screencast, what you wanna show in the video, based off the written script. Writing a script can also just be very helpful to keep it clean and polished and sounding professional, rather than you know, a video like this, for example, where it's not scripted, I'm just kind of speaking from whatever I think of. If you write a script, you're gonna make sure you want, you're gonna to touch on absolutely everything you need to touch on. It's gonna be said in the best possible way. So not only do you wanna write a script first, as the first step, but also just the fact that you're writing a script is, is definitely gonna help as well. Okay, when it comes to actually recording that script and recording uh, whether you're you know, hiring a voiceover artist to record the script or you're doing it yourself, um, this tip really applies some more if you're doing it yourself, but just take note of the location in which you're recording because more likely than not, there's gonna be revisions and changes you're gonna wanna make after the fact. Maybe a week later, you're gonna wanna go back and re-record something. Just make sure you have access to that original location because it's really hard to get that same sound. And when you edit that together, you're gonna to notice those differences. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you can go back to that same location and have the same recording scenario uh, to get the same sounding audio. Okay, now this tip has to do with recording the actual screencast. When you actually record your monitor screen, how do you actually do that? So basically what we use at ByteSight is we use QuickTime. They have a screencast recording option there. Another thing to take note of there is, you know, when you go to do this, maybe for the first time, you're gonna think you're gonna have to time all your actions and all your clicks on your software perfectly to the voiceover. And while timing can be helpful in the edit, it is not totally necessary to time up everything correctly. You don't have to be listening to the voiceover while you're recording the screencast to make sure it matches up. You can just fix things in the edit. You're gonna maybe see your cursor on the screen jumping around a bit as you create cuts from edit to edit. But generally, it's not that important to time it perfectly as you're recording the screencast. Just make sure you take your time as you record the screencast videos because you wanna have enough to work with in the edit, but you pretty much don't have to worry about timing it perfectly to the voiceover. When it comes to the dimensions of the screencast video, they're probably not gonna be exactly 16.9, so just take note that uh, in the edit, you're probably gonna have to zoom in a bit and crop it uh, so you don't have the black bars at either, at either side of the screen. Okay, so once you have your audio recorded and your screencast recorded and you're putting it together in the edit, it's sometimes helpful to supplement that with either some motion graphics or just some title cards even. It can just become a little bit monotonous to constantly see a screencast. So adding some title cards throughout to break it up um, and keep it organized and even just opting to completely go motion graphics to explain part of your software application, that can be helpful too. It might even be a better way of explaining some aspects of your software if it's hard to communicate that through a screencast. So mixing it up between screencasts, motion graphics, and title cards can be a great way to keep your video looking uh, professional. Okay, that's about it. Um, if you're really looking for ways to polish up your, your software demo video, you can even shoot actual video of a you know laptop or monitor sitting on a desk and superimpose your screencast on that. That can just be a way to change up the visual look of the video. You can even angle it so that you're kind of looking at the screen at a different angle, just for different options to, to switch it up in the edit. Besides that, you know, adding motion graphics can help too to kind of spice it up. But of course, you know, that's totally up to you. 
that's just another option to potentially, you know, add some flash, add some flair, and potentially, you know, deliver your message in a more effective way. Okay, so that pretty much covers it. Some tips on, you know, recording good audio, recording the screencast, putting it together in the edit. Again, we didn't go over how to actually get that all done, but these are just some tips to take note of. So thank you for watching. Subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you in the next one.